Hi, this is Patrick. Recently, I've been noticing that there are a lot of videos on yoga for surfers, which is great. These videos often explore yoga from a surfer's perspective. But what I haven't seen is anything about surfing for yogis, in which surfing is explored from a yoga student's perspective. If you look at a surfboard, you'll see a long piece of wood running down the middle called the stringer. This helps surfers know where their body is in relation to the sides. It helps to find alignment on the wave. Many times you can see the same kind of line on yoga mats. So there's obviously a connection between these two arts, and that's what this video is going to go into detail about. The first and most important part of surfing is actually catching the wave. To catch a wave, you need to keep your board into the water as it picks up speed. You can see here that the surfer is pushing his hands on the sides of the board on the rails, keeping the nose down. This allows the board to gain speed with the wave. Essentially, this is cobra pose, like you might do in a sun salutation sequence. Here on the surfboard, you can see the surfer paddles, paddles, picks up speed, and at the right time, pushes the board down into the wave. So if you do yoga, you already know one of the most important actions for catching a wave. Cobra pose. If you watch a really good surfer, it seems kind of like magic. All of a sudden, they go from lying down to standing up. Look how fast this is. What's happening underneath all that water? Well, it's an action called the pop-up, which requires arm strength, core strength, speed and balance all together. Let's check that out again in slow motion. The arms and shoulders extend strongly at the same time the core sucks the knees and legs under the body. It's tricky to do a good pop-up, but if you do yoga, you already have a lot of experience getting the knees under the body like that through your sun salutations. And you'll have even more of a feeling for it if you do a jumping style like this. Surfing instructors are always really impressed by how fast yoga students master the pop-up. When most people think of balance, they think of something like this, the body facing forward and the arms out to the side. But of course, in surfing or any board sport for that matter, you're not facing forward, you're facing the side. This requires a whole different sense of balance. Check this surfer out as he catches his monster wave in Mavericks. He's doing fine, but you can see right here, his center of gravity comes outside the line of the board, outside that stringer, and that's it for him. So in surfing, the key balance point is not front and back balance, but to the side, something I call planar balance. It's as if the body is between two large sheets of glass. If you do yoga, you're already familiar with this feeling from poses like this, half moon pose. In this pose, the entire body is balanced on one leg, but is still maintaining a very narrow plane, nothing's out of line. I'll show you this pose again on the surfboard, and you can see how nothing, no part of my body is going outside the edges of that board. This side-to-side -side orientation of balance doesn't come naturally to the human brain, which is so used to moving front and backwards. But if you practice yoga, you already have a sense of this kind of balance before you even step on the board. Okay, so you've caught the wave and you've popped up, now is the time to actually ride it. If you watch a good surfer, you'll see that it seems almost effortless. Their bodies are loose, their hands are slack, nothing is tense. So how exactly are they maintaining their balance while being so relaxed? The secret is all in the lower joints of the body. You can see here in tree pose, if I lock my knees and toes, as soon as I fall out of line, the whole body falls with me. However, if I keep my knee, ankle, and toes relaxed, the pose gains a high degree of lightness and flexibility much like a real tree. Real trees, if you go and push on them, will bend with you, they won't fight you. Same for this pose and same for surfing. So, with relaxed hips, knees, toes, and ankles, it doesn't really matter if I stray too far to the left or to the right. I'll always be able to come back to the center line without too much trouble. Waves look glassy and smooth, but when you're actually on them, you find there's a lot of bumps and undulation. By keeping your lower joints relaxed and open as you do in a yoga balance pose, you'll find these things are no problem and actually a lot of fun. Sometimes in surfing, you'll find you in a really difficult spot, like watch this huge bump the surfer goes through. Oh, she really nailed that. She did it by relaxing and not freaking out. In yoga, we see the same kind of thing with the drop back. A lot of people get scared right here, tense up, and therefore fall through the pose. But if you learn to just relax and go with the pose, you'll find it all comes naturally. One of these make it or break it points in surfing is when the power of the wave catches your board. Check this out. The surfer is going from a pretty slow speed, zoom, to a really high speed in just a matter of seconds. If you tense up like this during that critical moment, you definitely wipe out. The key, just like a difficult yoga pose, as you feel the rush of the wave, relax with it. Don't fight it. Keep the body strong but supple. Keep your breath smooth. Go with it. And the great thing is, these lessons will carry over into your daily life. All these things I've been talking about happen in a split second on the actual wave. There's no time to think about or plan your next move. You will be well served by your yoga practice because in yoga we learn to approach the body as an integrated whole, not just a brain trapped in a bag of skin. 
This union is what all surfers and yogis are looking for, and I hope you find it.